just a couple weeks ago, this was a 2x12. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome back to my shop. This may look a lot like it did last week when I put out the video, or I guess it was about two weeks ago. Um, but this week we got a lot more done. Now this is a very solid piece. It's all one massive chunk that you can you know, lift up and carry around. It's on feet, it's, it's ready to go, and I'm ready to start building what actually turns this into a lathe. And I am loving where it's at so far. So this week we're gonna be talking about the tusked tenons, um, installing the feet, and basically making this solid. So let's dive in and take a look at it. So the first thing I wanna work on are the wedges for this. There will be six in total. Each wedge goes vertically through the tenon and holds them in place. Uh, they are made out of white oak. I wanted a harder wood because they are under a decent amount of pressure and they need to be cut at nine inches long. Unfortunately, I cut mine at eight inches long because you need an eight inch finished length, um, but you need to cut about an inch off the end to give yourself a blunt end. Um, so I cut mine a little short, but I'll be talking about that in the future. Um, just when you're doing it, cut them nine inches long for a four inch tenon. It's just easier that way. Now this is something that confuses a lot of people. How do you start a saw on the corner to cut down this angle? And honestly, you do it very carefully. Uh, it's just taking your time, take the weight off of the saw blade and hold it in your hand. You notice how I was holding a little closer to the saw at the beginning and then move back once I established the cut. Um, you want to be holding very, very little weight on the actual wood. This will allow you to guide it much easier. Once it's in, then you can keep on cutting. I have the board tipped at an angle so that my cut is actually vertical. And once it's started, it's just like any other cut. Just run down along it. Once you have the long cut made, then you can put it in the vise and cut it off to length. This way you get uh, two wedges for the price of one. And you need six of them total, so it goes pretty quickly. Next up, I need to actually cut these tips off like I was talking about earlier. This gives you a blunt end so you can pound them back out. If it's sharp, then it becomes hard to pound them out when they're done. Next, I need to cut, I need to clean up all of the saw marks. Just a few quick passes from the plane do this fairly easily. Um, if your saw cut was fairly straight, then it really only takes four or five, or in this case a dozen, because I think I had a deeper nick at one point. But I want to keep them fairly smooth and straight. Once the wedges are done, then I can go about making the mortise to put them in. Now I want to put the, the tenon in good and tight, and then have it hanging out the bottom about three quarters of an inch draw the edge on, on the, the angle of the wedge and then along the frame. This will give me the sides of the mortise so that I can carry those lines up around the top and know exactly how big to cut the hole on the top and bottom. For laying out the lines in the mortise, I actually want to set up the marking gauge at the same width as the wedge so that I can lay those out. In this case, it was a half inch wide. And then I can carry those lines that I created just a moment ago up along the side here. You can see I put it into the nick mark, lock the square in place, and then draw that line up on the top. And you can see there I have the wide end of the wedge, and on the other end there's a smaller box for the narrow end. And then for the boring out, it's a fairly easy process. Um, the uh, Drilling the hole along the straight edge uh, is just like boring any other hole. You just want to make sure it's straight. And so I'll be eyeing down it and checking from one to the other. But when you're boring out the angle on the uh, um, on the angled side, you have to be far more careful. And so I'm actually eyeballing down it to make sure that I'm running along that pencil line that I drew on the side. And I'll occasionally check it, making sure I'm vertical, making sure everything's right. And uh, just eyeballing it, you can actually come pretty darn close. The important part is the chisel work. And uh, this is the part that scares a lot of people, but if you if you board out the holes well, the chisel work goes fairly quickly. I think each of these ended up taking me about uh, three or four minutes. They, they were very, very fast, especially in this pine. It cuts so quickly and so easily uh, when you're used to cutting a lot of white oak. Um, Douglas fir is a really nice soft wood. It just carves easily. What I'm going to be doing is basically chopping all the way around this. I'll chop one end, then one side, then the other end, then the other side. And I'll just keep going around in a circular pattern until I get down um, about halfway, then flip it over and do the other way. And just eyeballing it as I go. And so as I'm cutting on the straight side, I'm eyeballing down the chisel and then down that line that I drew on the side. Then I'll be cutting on the side of it and I'll keep it vertical to the board. And then when I come around to the angled side like this, I just eyeball along the chisel, 
and make sure it lines up with that line that I drew on the side. And in eyeballing it, it goes very, very easily. And uh, I really never had any problem with it. Just to be careful. On the straight side, I actually want to end up cutting it back about an eighth inch. So once I cut it all out, then I'm going to back that line up about a full eighth inch. This will allow a little bit of slop in that wedge to pull the shoulder of the tenon tight up against the joint. That way when you slide it through, there's a little bit of movement in there that allows it to pull it very, very tight. If you keep it straight to the other side, uh, then it won't be able to pull it very tight in the future, especially if the wood dries at all or shrinks. Um, so cutting off a little bit extra is nice. On to the feet. For the first thing I need to do is cut the tenons for the two verticals to sink down into the feet. And I'm going to be cutting a shoulder on the large side of each one. So I'm laying out that line a a three and a half inches up from the end. And then with that line I cut, I'm going to come in and leave a shoulder wall here. Now to cut this uh, shoulder in, uh, it is easier for me just to do it by hand, just in that knife wall. It works very easily and very quickly. You just have to take your time and, and be careful. Um, some people might want to uh, clamp on a fence, but I find if I have that knife wall, as long as I start the cut easily, then it will stay in that knife wall and I can cut right down and no need for a fence. I get a really nice clean line right on my line. Once I've cut down in the shoulder an eighth inch, uh, the, yeah, on the shoulder an eighth inch, and then I can cut down the cheeks. This is basically resawing, um, so I cover resawing in a bunch of other videos. But it's just like any other cut; you're following a line. It just happens to be a bigger cut. But with this Douglas fir, it goes really quickly, and voila! Um, just following a line right along, cut straight down, and you've got your uh, you've got your cheek. For the longer leg, I needed to chalk it up in the leg vise, and this was a bit of a, a pain to cut at this weird angle, um, but I only had to make two cuts there, so voila, I can cut out those two cheeks as well. Now that I have the cheeks cut out, I need to cut out the middle piece. I don't want one big tenon. I'm kind of viewing this as a small breadboard, uh, but without the movement problems. So I'm going to cut down through the middle and then cut out this middle part. And this is one of the few times where I actually want to use a coping saw to remove the waste. And I'm not going to chisel out that bottom part. I'm going to just leave that uh, little bit extra there as a, uh, well, kind of like a breadboard end, uh, if you've ever made one of those. Now to transfer the marks from the tenons onto the feet. And the feet, in this case, are just a 2x4. Um, works fairly well. I just need to cut two big rectangular through mortises for these tenons to slide into. You find it easier just to clamp it in place and then use the marking knife to leave nice big marks um, on the face of the legs so that I can follow those in the future. Then I can transfer those marks up and around uh, so that I can lay out the actual mortises on the face of the leg or on the, the top and bottom of the leg. Then I can use the very same marking gauge, mortising gauge, that I used for laying out the tenon. Um, I kept it at its settings for marking out the tenon, and I can then mark out those mortises. That way I can make sure I have the exact same um, width that I'm using for the tenons on the mortises. And then it's basically exactly like doing the wedge mortises, except for there's no angle involved. And the mortises are bigger, so that actually makes them easier. <laughs> it's just... Uh, boring them out and uh, chiseling back and uh, taking a little bit of time with this one I ended up cutting I think it was three holes across each mortise and uh, then came in with the chisel and chopped it out. Just as before I'm going to work my way around uh, the angle I'll cut off the the majority of the sides and I'm going to stay away from the marking gauge line as long as I possibly can until basically there's just a hair left and then I'll put the knife right into the marking gauge line and cut all the way down a nice smooth edge. Basically all the time just eyeballing what is vertical, then flipping it over and coming out from the other side. Now for the connection on these, I did not want to make these removable. I just wanted to lock them on permanently, and so I'm going to actually be doing a draw bore um, joint here. I did a whole video on uh, draw bores, so if you want to see that, you can look up that video as well. But basically I'm going to be drilling a hole all the way through the mortises. Then I will put it in place and mark where that hole is in the tenons. So I'm going to grab that same bit, put it in the hole, and then use the lead screw to make a little point mark in the middle of the tenon. And then I do not want to follow that point mark I made. I want to put it a little bit closer to the shoulder than the point mark, about an eighth inch closer. So I'm going to put the, 
the lead screw of the of the auger bit about an eighth inch towards the shoulder from where I marked it. This way, when I put the pin through the hole, it'll tighten the whole thing up. To create those pins, I'm just going to use a uh, half inch oak dowel, use a plane to kind of give a bit of a bull nose on the front, makes it easier for going through the hole, and then cut it off longer than it needs to be. I don't really care what the length is, as long as it's longer, I can trim it off later. Then a little bit of glue in the hole, and you can drive in the peg. And voila, yeah, there is a joint that will never come apart. Um, really kind of a, a fun joint that once you try them a few times, you, you fall in love with them. A, a good draw bore hole is nice. And then it's uh, locking it together. Put the wedges in, and we've got a, uh, a lathe body. There you have it. I've got a solid base and body ready to put in all the mechanicals that the lathe can go on. Um, next week, hopefully, we're going to be doing the spring and the pull arm that comes down. And if you kind of imagine an arm up here rocking up and down that has the cord running around the piece you're working on right here. I'm really looking forward to doing that. And then it's going to be about making the, uh, the puppet that slides back and forth and then setting in your centers, putting a tool rest on it, and voila, we have a lathe. So not that much more to do on this, and I'm looking forward to uh, putting those videos out here soon. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why I can keep putting out videos like this. If you'd like to find out more about that or help out with Patreon, you can do so right down here. Also, if you'd like to subscribe and see some behind-the-scenes footage, you can do that as well. That's about it for today, and until next time, have a wonderful day.